So here we have the good old Kenmore Direct Drive. This one is a bagless model, but this applies for all of the models with this same base. So the first thing you'd want to do is to remove the bin or bag, depending on your model. Next, to make it a little smaller, you'd want to remove everything external to the unit, so that includes the attachments and the handle. The handle has one screw in the back of it and slides backwards to be removed. Now that we have it a little smaller to fit on the work surface, we can start with some optional maintenance. This would be to remove the rear air duct or filter housing on the bagless models and the hose on all models. This would let you clear any clogs that may happen and clean the back of the unit. Now let's remove the exhaust filter. On this model it's on the side, but on the bag models it's on the back. The next thing to do is remove this hose by twisting and pulling it downwards. It's not necessary to do this step right now, but this is the easiest time to do it. Okay, now this might sound a little counterintuitive, but we're actually going to take the front housing off of the main body of the unit to get the head off of it. Now that the screws are removed, you can go ahead and lift the top off of the body. Be mindful of any seals or gaskets that may be loose once you remove this. The headlight cover comes out of it from the front. All you do is release those two clips. Now let's remove this hose bracket. This helps you gain access to the wiring. Now the head will just lift off of there on the side that has the hose on it. Be very careful to note where the wires go and how they lay in there. There usually is a schematic on the inside of these models. Once you make note of the wiring, 
go ahead and remove the connectors. The connectors could be crimp connectors or wire nuts. If they're crimp connectors, you will need to cut them off of there and replace them with wire nuts or crimp connectors. Now that the head is completely freed, let's turn our attention towards that. The first thing to do is to unscrew the screws that are on the bottom of it. Now that the screws are removed, there are three clips, one right under the hose and two at each edge of the brush roller. Enjoy as I struggle trying to be too nice to this clip. With everything unclipped and removed, the bottom of the base should just lift off of it. There are felt gaskets at each edge of the brush roller. Those can be removed for cleaning. This is optional and a little annoying, but you can slide the height adjustment lever out of the base for cleaning. However, since everything is plastic, you can clean it as is. The wheels just unclip from the bottom of the height adjustment. If the handle release is broken, you can replace it by removing the screw, removing the bracket, and then using a screwdriver to unclip the handle release. Next is to remove the brush roller itself. The roller simply lifts out of the housing, and there are two electrical connections and a thermal sensor to remove. Let's free the wiring a little bit. This can be tricky because the wiring is under a little flap of plastic. Now that the wiring is free, Let's separate the brush housing from the remainder of the head. There are two clips at the top of the brush head. Luckily for me, this was easy because they came pre-broken. If yours aren't broken, simple downward pressure and a little bit of leverage will do.
the bumper simply peels off of the housing. Once again noting where the wiring goes, you can remove the wires and the circuit breaker from their guides. Of course we can't forget about the felt gaskets. Now looking at the brush roller, the first thing to remove would be the little rubber cover on the motor side of the roller. Now looking at the side without the motor, the bearing on the end just pulls out of there. Should that bearing need to be replaced, it's a standard 608 and unscrews easily. Separating the brush ends and the motor from the roller is a pretty simple task. You'll note that there are clips on each end, and it just simply requires some leverage to get them out of there. The motor with the planetary gear reduction on it is quite the sight. These motors are serviceable, but that's definitely for another video. Of course, after cleaning everything, it's time for reassembly. Each end of the brush roller has slots to correctly interface with the rest of the brush. A very important and easy to forget step is to install the felt gaskets. A slightly more tricky but still pretty straightforward task is sliding the bumper back onto the brush housing. The roller simply slides into the housing, and the wiring goes back to where it was.
Now the upper portion of the rest of the head just simply clips on it, and the wires feed back through where they were. Turning our attention to the base plate, something to do would be to clip the wheels back into the height adjustment. These wheels originally had a square o-ring in that groove around them, so they would be softer on hard floors. If you did remove this part, the height adjustment lever slides back to where it was. Of course, don't forget the felt gaskets like I did. Align the hose so that the pin on the top of it is facing towards the back of the unit. The installation of the handle release is exactly the opposite of the removal. The base plate simply slides onto the rest of the head. Note that all of the screws except for the one for the handle have been the same. This makes assembly a lot easier. Well, would you look at that? I ran out of tape and I only have one. I originally intended this to be a full service video, but I only had an hour of tape, and that went a lot faster than I expected. The rest of the assembly process is pretty straightforward, as it's the exact opposite of the disassembly process. Well, hopefully this helped you a little bit, because I've seen quite a few people struggle with these. Of course, if you do have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments, and I will try to respond.